The eigenvectors of a matrix are those vectors on which the matrix acts by scalar multiplication. In other words, the result of multiplying an eigenvector of A by the matrix A is that that vector merely gets scaled by a scalar multiplication factor. To find the eigenvectors of a matrix, and every matrix has at least one, we need to solve the equation AV is equal to lambda V, which is usually solved by subtracting lambda V from both sides and instead seeking a non-trivial solution to the matrix equation A minus lambda times the identity times V is equal to the zero vector. Because we need this equation to have a non-trivial solution for V, we require that the matrix A minus lambda times the identity to be a not invertible, in other words, singular matrix. Requiring singularity gives us the process for finding the eigenvalues of the matrix. By requiring A minus lambda times the identity to be singular, we are therefore requiring its determinant to be equal to zero. This gives us an algebraic equation called the characteristic equation for the matrix A that we can solve to determine the eigenvalues. So we'll take our matrix A, subtract lambda times the identity, which has the effect of subtracting a lambda from each diagonal entry, calculate the determinant of that matrix using whatever method we choose. Here I'm using a cofactor expansion along the bottom row. And then set that polynomial, called the characteristic polynomial, whose degree will always be equal to the number of rows or columns in the matrix A. So in this example, the degree will be 3. And set that polynomial equal to 0. And solve the resulting equation for lambda. This is, in general, a complicated process because solving polynomial equations can be very challenging. Sometimes the solutions are irrational. Sometimes they're not even real. But if we can solve this equation and discover the values for lambda, we will find the eigenvalues of the matrix A. In this example, the characteristic polynomial factors, and we can determine that the eigenvalues are the zeros of those factors. In this example, those are 2 and 4. In the cases where roots of this polynomial are repeated, we say that those roots have an algebraic multiplicity. So since lambda equals 2 was a twice repeated root, we will say that that eigenvalue has algebraic multiplicity equal to 2. Now that we've discovered the eigenvalues of this matrix, we can find the eigenvectors by solving this matrix equation in other words, finding a non-trivial vector v such that a minus lambda times the identity times v is equal to the zero vector. To do that, we'll take each eigenvalue in turn, set up the equation a minus lambda i times v is equal to the zero vector, and endeavor to solve it. Remembering that this will be a singular equation, that means that this equation will always have more than one solution. Namely, this equation will always be consistent because the zero vector will always satisfy it. But if we've chosen our eigenvalues correctly, there will also be infinitely many solutions to each of these. So we should use row reduction to find the parametric vector form of the solutions of each of these systems. In the case of a minus 2i times v is equal to 0, row reduction ends up wiping out the second and third rows of that augmented matrix. For a minus 4i times v is equal to 0, row reduction wipes out the bottom row. Identify the free variables. Those are the pivots, the, sorry, the columns that do not have pivots. In the case of lambda equals 2, there are two columns without pivots that we will assign free variables to. And for lambda equals 4, there's one column without a pivot to which we will assign a free variable. The number of free variables associated with an eigenvalue is known as the geometric multiplicity of that eigenvalue. Then, solving for x, y, and z in this example, and assigning the free variables 
to the free variables. So t and s get the free parameters for y and z. And likewise, in this example, t is the free variable for the variable y. Gives us a parametric vector solution to these systems of equations. And the geometric multiplicities of these eigenvalues are the dimensions of those solution spaces, or in other words, the number of free variables that we found. So for lambda equals 2, the algebraic multiplicity was 2 because it was a repeated root twice, and the geometric multiplicity is also 2 because there were two free variables. That need not always happen for an eigenvalue with a algebraic multiplicity greater than 1, but in this example, it happens to be the case. Finally, we will say that the eigenvectors associated with each of these eigenvalues are the basis vectors of these respective solution spaces. So to package our answer, we will just take the basis vectors that we found in our parametric vector solutions and write them as our eigenvectors. So we will say, for example, that the matrix A has an eigenvalue, lambda equals 2, with algebraic multiplicity 2, and a basis for that eigenspace consists of these two vectors. A also has an eigenvector lambda equals 4, and a basis for its eigenspace is this vector right here. So the eigenvector eigenvalue equation AV equals lambda V governs the behavior of eigenvectors of matrices. But as a tool for solving to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors, it's pretty limiting. So we transform it instead into the equation a minus lambda i times v is equal to the zero vector. And by requiring this equation to have non-trivial solutions, non-zero vectors v, for which this equation is satisfied, we discover that that means a minus lambda i must be a singular matrix, and therefore its determinant must be equal to zero. That gives us the characteristic equation, which we use to solve for the eigenvalues of the matrix. And then, taking each one of those eigenvalues in turn and solving that equation, we'll describe the eigenvectors associated with each eigenvalue.